Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge, and welcome to Eldridge and Company. When I first met Tom Allen, his newspaper covered news on the west side of Manhattan. Then he had all of Manhattan's neighborhood papers to cover the news of the borough. And now he runs a multimedia organization, city and state, that covers all of New York's local and state politics and policies. So welcome, Tom, I'm glad to see you. You started out wanting to be a writer, I was a journalist and editor in the beginning of my career. Yep, I worked at the New York Times and then I became the editor of the West Side Spirit. I wrote a profile of Jimmy once. I know you did. Uh -huh. And I think I wrote some news for you at one point, but anyway, because I was in the council at the time. Um, yes. <laughs> but did you know you were gonna be such an entrepreneur? Uh, I, I had an inkling of it, uh, but five years into being an editor, I was getting bored. And I also wanted to, to uh, start a family and live in Manhattan. And it was gonna be very difficult to do that on an editor's salary. So that's when I went over to the dark side and became a publisher. <laughs> and then after you were the publisher of the paper, and I love the story of how you, you were an acting publisher, and then you got this big advertising thing and you were off, yes. off to the- I, so, I was, so I was an acting publisher because the previous publisher was ousted and it was a new, the company had just become a public company. And the uh, president of the company and the chairman of the board didn't know what to make of me because I had just been an editor and they were worried about putting me in charge of the newspaper uh, because I didn't have any, any business or advertising background. Um, my, the president, I asked the president of the company, what should I do as a publisher? He said two things. He said, you should be the first person in the office and the last person out and you should open the mail every day. So <laughs> being very obedient, I did both of those things. Um, about the second week that I was the acting publisher, the mail came, you know, in those days it was a huge bag of snail mail. Um, I started rifling through it and, um, I saw a letter that was addressed to my predecessor. <clears throat> it was from an ad agency called Bleeker and Sullivan. I opened it up and it said, uh, it was addressed to him. It said, uh, dear Mr. So-and-so, my client Westside Camera is celebrating its 75th anniversary and because of, and I have a $75,000 ad budget. And because of how bad you've treated me and my client in the past, you're going to get zero of it. Signed, it's Hawk <laughs> Um, So I, you know, I noticed it was an Israeli surname. Um, I speak a little bit of Hebrew uh, because of my upbringing. So I called him up and I said, it's Hawk, I'm so sorry. I don't know what my predecessor did, but I'm sure it was horrible. Could I take you to breakfast tomorrow morning? Um, we went to breakfast the next day and I walked out with a $45,000 ad agreement. Right. Um, I called up the president of the company and the chairman of the board and told them that story. And they said, please take the acting off of your title. That's so great. That's a great story and a great lesson to everybody. Um, tell us now about city and state. It's quite amazing. So city and state was an idea that I had back in the mid 1990s. Um, I was the vice president of a public media company called Muse Communications. And, um, we, I was involved in the starting of a newspaper called The Hill in Washington, D.C. in 1994. Um, Jerry Finkelstein, who was then my boss, had this idea of starting a newspaper to compete with Roll Call in D.C. because there was only one newspaper covering Capitol Hill. We hired a famous journalist in the New York Times, again, Marty Tulshin. And within a year, that paper became very successful. Uh, we were, our timing was great because it was during the Gingrich Revolution and Congress turned over that year. So all the people who had been loyal readers to Roll Call were no longer there and uh, we were able to compete with them. Anyway, after a year or two of, of seeing that become successful, I thought, wow, I wonder if I could start a New York version of that. Um, 10 years later in 2006, when I was running a different company called Manhattan Media with all those community newspapers you mentioned, um, I decided to start uh, what was then called City Hall newspaper. It was a monthly newspaper covering city government. The first issue came out in June of 06. We actually set to celebrate our 15th anniversary. But the third issue of that publication uh, did a cover story about whether Mike Bloomberg might run for president and what his chances would be, well before people talked about whether Bloomberg could be a presidential candidate. Um, and when that issue came out, I was told that it was sent out, you know, we, we delivered it to City Hall and apparently somebody put a copy in everybody's desk in the bullpen at City Hall. Um, I had lunch the next week with Kevin Shiki, who was a friend, who was deputy mayor. And he said, Tom, I have a funny story to tell you. He said, when I saw that story about Mike, I folded it over and put it on his desk. Apparently Bloomberg walked over to Kevin a little while later with a copy of City Hall newspaper and said, Kevin, thank you for showing me that story about me in City Hall. And then he flipped it over and he said, but why didn't you show me this anti-Bloomberg ad from the 
Patrolman's Benevolent Association. <laughs> and that was our first advertiser. Um, the PBA took out an ad that said something to the effect of run for president. He can't even negotiate a contract with his own police. Um, and that was really the moment when I realized I had a business. Um, I went, I rushed back to my office. I, I called up the guy from the PBA and I said, um, Al, you only cared about one guy seeing your ad, right? He said, yes. And I said, well, here's what happened. And he said, wow, that's the best $5,000 I ever spent. Sign me up for three more. Um, and that was really when City Hall newspaper, uh, I knew that we had something there. Um, Later that year, Andrew Cuomo was in my office uh, for his endorsement interview. Uh, he was running for attorney general and he saw City Hall sitting on my desk and he said, Tom, it's great that you're doing a newspaper covering city government, but all the money is up in Albany. Uh -huh. So I then, start, I then started another newspaper the following year called The Capitol. Um, and so we had these two newspapers, City Hall and The Capitol, and eventually we merged it into one publication called City and State in 2011. You don't endorse people. It's a nonpartisan. It's a nonpartisan publication. You know, we're one of the few media outlets left that is neither left nor right. Um, and you know, our our reporters and our editors, um, you know, we cover Democrats, we cover Republicans, we cover you know all all across the state, and uh, we do it objectively. Um, and I, that's kind of a dying art in journalism. It is. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it's uh, very complicated these days. I think it's actually terrible. Yes. But yes. You, you occasionally write columns. Now. I do, I do. I, 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 I do it when, when the spirit moves me, if I have a, an idea, a public policy idea or something mm -hmm. that I wanna write to get off my chest. I also do it occasionally just to show that my, uh, my editorial team that I, I actually have some editorial chops. Um, you know, I wrote a lot during the pandemic, um, s suggesting ways that New York City could come back. Um, I wrote a column in the middle of the pandemic that said, you know, something to the effect that, you know, don't count New York out. It's going to make a comeback. It's not a question of, of if, but when. And uh, that seemed to get a lot of great attention. Mm -hmm. Well, it's right. It's true. I think we gave up. I mean, we're giving, I don't like all this talk about how we have to come back. We're going to come back. Or we are. Absolutely. Coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that lack of positivity, I think is, it takes you back to when you ran for a mayor because you really had a feeling and you had a you had positions. You were part, you know, you were gonna. Yeah, you know, you know, I, the city. <laughs> I I learned the hard way that you know, being good at public policy isn't enough. Um, that you have to have a base and a, an ability to raise money. But um, I really enjoyed running for office. It gave me a perspective that I didn't have before, and I have to say, you know, it allowed me um, to really dig deep into public policy issues, which I've written about since then. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you saw, but there was a piece in the Daily News recently that mentioned that I um, was the um, principal of uh, what Eric Adams called his mayor school. Um, Eric and I became friendly a couple of years ago, and um, he asked for my advice and my help um, and asked me if I would set up um, classes for him in public policy with notable people in the city, uh, which I did. Uh, my son is his press secretary, so I couldn't say, I couldn't say no to my son's boss. <laughs> and um, we did about a hundred of those public policy discussions and meetings at a diner in Brooklyn, right behind the building where I live and four blocks from Borough Hall. And um, I think those meetings made, um, made Eric a better candidate and became, he became much more well-versed in policy. And um, he met some of the top people in the city and they got to know him in an intimate setting. And um, I think, you know, it was hopefully one piece of the puzzle that allowed him to become mayor. That was very good. So your son is a press secretary? My son is his press secretary, yeah. Um, Jonah, and Jonah's, Jonah, um, you know, was gonna go into journalism, um, but I wasn't gonna hire him at my, at my company. I told him he had to stink or swim on his own. Um, <laughs> after sending off, you know, his resume to, this is about five years ago when he got out of college, uh, to a number of uh, media outlets, he, he was aiming pretty high. Uh, he didn't he didn't get uh, any responses. So I I told him I said, Jonah, what else would you be interested in doing uh, to cast your net a little wider? And he said, Well, I like local politics. So okay. he ended up working in government and and now is uh, Eric Adams press secretary at Borough Hall. That's great. Um, your audience is your audience really the people that you write about? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, 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 there's I, I, as I say to my team and, and our, our, our um, reporters and editors, 
I look at our audience as kind of concentric circles building out. Um, when I started the publication, I, I was really writing for an audience of about six. Um, I wanted to make sure that the governor, the mayor, the head of the city council, the city council, the speaker, uh, the head of the state assembly and the head of state senate all read it and their staffs read it. And if I could then make uh, prove that those people were reading my publication, um, everybody else who is an elected leader and everybody else who's a staff member will, will, will read it. And then eventually the lobbyists and the political consultants and the government affairs professionals and others involved in government will, will follow suit. And that's really what happened. Uh, we now have 30,000 subscribers to our morning email called First Read. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, we're statewide. We started out just in New York and now we're, you know, we cover um, upstate, you know, Buffalo, Rochester, you know, uh, we do, we cover Long Island, we cover Westchester. So we're a statewide political media. Are you outlet. working in Pennsylvania also? Yeah, so we just, so I sold my, I sold the company uh, about 10 months ago, uh, right in the, you know, in the middle of COVID. Um, something I'd been intending to do for, you know, for a little while. Um, we were approached la last summer by a media company based in DC called Government Executive, who liked what we were doing and, and wanted to get behind us and expanding around the country. So um, they bought us and they kept me on as the publisher and I'm spending a fair amount of my time now um, expanding to other states. So we, we launched in Pennsylvania in May. Uh, last night we had our, our uh, a 50 over 50 event there, which was very successful. Um, Michael Smirkanish was one of our honorees, uh, the cable TV host. Um, uh, Ezekiel Emanuel, who's Ron Emanuel's brother, mm -hmm. who's a famous doctor, was one of our honorees. Ed Rendell spoke. So um, we've, we've penetrated Pennsylvania very quickly uh, in the first six months. And now we're scouting out a third state to expand to uh, hopefully by early 22. Before I let this go, my what I want you to do is expand, and I don't know how you do it, is expand to students for, that are intending mm. to go into the government. I mean, I'm so appalled always at the apathy and, and um, the lack of voting numbers when you read the results of an election. So I, somehow you ought to get in to show. Yeah, how it no, I, I like that. I mean, Gail Brewer has always told me that she makes First Read and City and State Magazine a prerequisite of all of her interns and everybody who works starts working for her. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I listen, I, we would love to have a bigger and bigger audience. Um, the, the stuff that we do is pretty insider, uh, insidery, but, you know, but politics is becoming that, you know, more and more important in people's lives and particularly in young people's lives. And, you know, as we were talking about before, we just came out with our 40 under 40 issue yesterday in New York. And we had some great young people on that list who were doing some amazing things. The gentleman we put on the cover was, uh, is the head of the union trying to organize Amazon workers around the country. Um, and he was, you know, he was fired from Amazon, I think a year, year, year and a half ago and decided to become a union organizer. So we have great young, smart people that we cover. Um, our 40 under 40 is a very coveted issue. Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've gotten a number of resumes in the past where people said on the bottom as part of their qualifications that they were a city and state 40 under 40. Um, Hakeem, Hakeem Jeffries was one of our first 40 under 40s about, you know, 12 years ago. Um, now so, he'll be 50 you know, over 50s, right? <laughs> and we do, we do do 50 over 50 as well. I think you were one of our honorees a couple of years I ago. I was very proud and pleased by that. I felt that yeah, was pulled out of the was like, was, <laughs> That was very, that was before the world changed, Ronnie. We had, we were able to do that in person. It was a lovely event. Um, <laughs> so are you gonna, you'll have to do, uh, well, I don't, 90 over nine, nine over nine. <laughs> anyway. Don't, don't, don't tempt me. <laughs> How did you become, I mean, not only did you do this and not only are you the entrepreneur, but you're um, amazing at your event planning and your, your publicity. I mean, how do you figure Thanks. all things out? You know, so in, in 1999, Ronnie, you know, when, when journalism was suffering and publishing was suffering and I, you know, I saw uh, the writing on the wall that advertise, if you were trying to live purely by advertising, you were not gonna survive. I, um, I actually decided to resurrect an event that, um, that, had, that had not happened for a number of years at our East Side newspaper. It was called the Audi Awards, Our Town Thanks You. And um, 
we ended up um, honoring that evening 30 Eastsiders. Um, and one of them was Bob Morgenthau, the, the Manhattan DA. Another one was Lou Rudin, uh, uh, <laughs> who was famous uh, head of Abney, real estate developer. Muriel Siebert, who was the first woman on the stock exchange. And all of them attended our event. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, these are you know, important people who obviously are very busy and they're happy to be honored by a local newspaper. Um, and that was really the first time that I saw that doing events was another way of doing journalism and also um, helping to pay our bills because we were able to sell sponsorships and tickets and things like that. I so, have to correct you though. I think the first one must have been the West Side since you were the West Side spirit. Because uh, I yeah, I, I did both. Honored, I did, I I did remember the Oddies and the Westies. You had the Zabars, you had Jimmy yes. and me. Uh, yep. I mean, you had a whole that, bunch of people. <laughs> that was at a restaurant, right? I remember that. Yes, exactly. You know, it's funny that a couple yeah. of years later, and you may remember this, Ronnie, um, I was doing an event every year called the Blackboard Awards, which honored the top teachers in the city. Mm -hmm. And my MC was Frank McCourt, who was a very close friend of mine who I taught high school with. And the head of the building workers union, I'm sorry, the, the, the communications okay. director came, came to one of our events and saw that the Blackboard Awards and was enamored with it and said, came up to me afterwards, he goes, we'll pay you to produce an event honoring our, 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 our employees if you can find a MC as good as Frank McCourt. <laughs> um, I racked my brain for a couple of days. And then if you remember, I called you up and I said, Ronnie, can I borrow Jimmy for one? And I, I'd like him to MC this event. Um, and what, what you may or may not remember is um, you, you asked me to pick him up in a, in a car because he was getting, getting on in years. I think um, you, offered, I, you offered to pick him up in a car. I did. No, no, I did. I did. I, and said, I, my, I asked my assistant to get a car and um, we had a barter deal with a, a car company. And I walked downstairs at 6 p.m. to go get in the car to pick up Jimmy. And it was a stretch limousine about a block long. <laughs> and I said to the driver, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't order this. And I apologize. It's the only car we have tonight. <laughs> so we went, we went, I think you were living on 68th and Broadway then. Right. And uh, we, we drove to the Upper West Side and Jimmy walked out of your um, <laughs> building and you know, I'll put it in, in nicer terms. And he said it, but he said, what is this? I'm not <laughs> going to know union headquarters in this. And I said, Jimmy, I'm really sorry, but it's the only car they had. Uh, I have an idea. Why don't we we'll park three blocks away because we're running late. We got to go. <laughs> and he looked at me with contempt and he said, I'm doing this for the union, not for you. <laughs> and he got in the and he got in the car and he was an amazing MC that night. Uh, everybody, in fact, it was it was Jimmy and Gabe. Yeah, right. I think that's true. That event still happens annually, uh, and we're probably you know a good fifteen years, twenty years out from that first time we did it. Um, the newspaper that I used to own, West Side Spirit in our town, they do the Building Worker Awards every year, and I'm I'm very proud when I see that it should come out that it's still yeah. thriving. And and people in the neighborhood all talk about it. I mean, it's a very <laughs> popular thing. It is, it is. It's, it's, it was a lovely, I remember, you know, the event was lovely. Every year you would get um, <laughs> tenants in buildings talking about how great their doorman is or their porter or the, you know, the cleaning person. And, you know, it would really, it would really bring a tear to your eye watching this event and these people who, who do, you know, difficult jobs that really never get much recognition having one night where they feel like they're getting an Oscar. Yeah. Um, Murray Kempton once said, the most honorable person is a good person in a bad job. And um, that was really always the way I felt uh, those evenings, that it was, it was a way to, to bring honor to those people. Yeah, that's so great. I, I, anyway, now, what's your next event? Um, I think tonight we're doing our 40 Under 40 events. Um, mm -hmm. we, you know, we do about one a week. We do about 50 events a year. Um, we've only done one live in the past year and a half. Uh, and that was our 15th anniversary party about two months ago. Uh, Chuck Schumer was the and was the uh, keynote speaker. Um, I was petrified for days afterwards that maybe we had we had jumped the gun and done and by doing an event inside we were gonna uh, be a super spreader. But thank God nobody got sick that night. Okay. Um, but um, we're we're doing our our corporate social responsibility awards in December. Mm -hmm. We're doing a full day event in December that's become a signature event for us called the New City Council Member Retreat, and it's a okay. full day retreat where we we, we um train new city council members. There's 36 of them this year. 
you remember probably what it was like being a new council member. So we have panels that talk about different aspects of what they, of what they need to know. Um, and we're gonna have a, a debate of the people uh, who were running for city council speaker. So um, yeah, those are, those are some of our big, big events that are coming up. Can you believe that, have, have there been many changes in government since you started? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the coverage of government has changed a lot. Um, the daily newspapers, you know, only cover the salacious stuff. The New York Times, you know, covers campaigns and covers they Albany. They cover anything, right? They yeah, they, they, right. They cover, they cover Albany only, you know, sporadically. Um, you know, they're, we have more people, I think, uh, full time in Albany these days than any other newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, except for except for Politico, I guess. Um, so it's a different kind of media environment, a different kind of political environment, and I think the relationship between the media and and the electeds have changed quite a bit as well. Yeah. Um, and you know, the tabloids are not as powerful as they once were. Yeah, and and also what what's so different now is the was the term limits in the council. In the back yes. and forth, you know, the rotating from the state. That's like, changed. Like the right. That's changed things a lot because every, you know, every eight years or so, there's musical chairs, and you know, people are always thinking about their next job. Um, right. So that's that's changed things quite a, quite a bit. Um, I think mostly for the good. I, I've I've always supported term limits. Um, I, I think there should be term limits for Congress. I think there should be term limits for the Supreme Court. To be honest, I think there should be the term limits for state government. But it should be staggered. I mean, to have 36 new members of the city council. It, I agree. It, that's a little scary. That was a flaw in the design. There should, there should be staggered so there's more people with experience uh, each mm -hmm. time. I agree. I totally agree. One of the problems is I think that people look to politics now as a profession. So they start, you know, at a low level and, and move way yes. up. Yes. And they yes. don't have anything else to go to if they're not enough right right no there's a number of people like that who you know who ran for mayor this time yeah no i i don't disagree um it is seen as a profession uh, to some people and not public service as much as it used to be yeah so now you think that are we in recovery in the city i think it's, I think it's going to be a tough slog um but i do i i am hopeful um i think the world has been turned upside down um i think the we're going to have to be innovative in order to uh, get the city back quickly. Um, I, I do think we have a great opportunity now at maybe um, solving our housing problem because I think commercial real estate and hotel and, you know, be be great hotels are, could, you know, are, could and should be converted uh, through zoning, through uh, city and state government uh, to affordable housing. Um, I do think we're going to need a, a smaller footprint of commercial real estate in New York, which again will free up uh, potentially housing for for that, which is desperately needed. Um, so I think if we have, you know, if Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul uh, or whoever is governor a year and a half from now, if they can, you know, really come up with innovative ways to take advantage of, uh, you know, what, what I think uh, somebody once said, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. um, if they can sort of take advantage of, of some of the um, opportunities that this crisis has, has presented to us to build, uh, you know, better housing, you know, more equitable city, better education system, uh, then, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, tearing down a building and then building it, building it again. The, the city, I think, was torn down over the past year and a half, and I mm -hmm. think it needs to be rebuilt. I, all cities have, don't you think? But we have to yes. say... Yeah. Yes. That's I think New York took a New York took a bigger country. hit than most than right. most. Thank you so much, and it's been so interesting to hear about all these things that you're covering, and I'm looking forward to the next project. So we'll stay in touch, right? Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>